there was a call to my office to retain us days before she went missing, and then I had a conversation with her, with her probably 24, 48 hours, I think, before she went missing. The biggest issue that stuck in my mind that day was her discussing what advantages could be gained in the divorce from telling the police how uh, Drew had killed Kathy Peterson. There were two witnesses the jury credited as the most convincing. One was the man that you just saw, Harry Smith, with us last Saturday. The other, Stacy Peterson's pastor, Neil Shorey, joins us now from Chicago. Pastor Shorey, thanks so much for being with us. I'm glad to be with you, Judge. All right. You ministered to Drew and his wife, apparently for the first time in 2005. Do you remember anything about them? Was there anything about this couple that stood out to you? Well, I think their age difference was the biggest thing that stood out. I mean, he was, he's much, much older than Stacy. And I think it's about 30 years or something. But after that first meet, in 2007, Stacy Peterson calls you, and she wants to meet with you, so you meet with her at a Starbucks. Tell us what she said to you. I, I met her at the Starbucks, and Stacy, uh, after we talked for a while about uh, regular marriage issues, she said she wanted to tell me something. And I said, well, Stacy, if you'd like to, to share something with me, you can, but I don't want you to feel any pressure. So after a little bit, after a little bit of time, uh, she said, she just blurted out, he did it. And I said, what, what do you mean? He did what? And she said, Drew killed Kathleen. What did you, what did you say when she said that to you? I, I was just in utter disbelief. And of course, I, I've heard well, a lot Pastor, of... excuse me for interrupting, but you knew what she meant because you were from the community, I assume. Yes, I, I was from the community, um, but I still wanted to clarify certainly and what did you say what did she say i i asked her i said who did what and she said drew killed kathleen and and she she ended up giving me quite a lot of a lot of detail uh, about the night that kathleen died and, and um you testified to that at the trial and tell us what you told the jury i, I told the jury uh, that uh, stacy and drew went to bed at the same time uh, the night that Kathleen died. And uh, at some point, Stacy woke up in the middle of the night and Drew was not in bed with her. So she looked all over the house for him and did not find him. And at some point, uh, she found him by the washer and dryer uh, with a bag and he was dressed in all black. And he removed all of his clothing and then he emptied the contents of the bag into the washing machine. And she walked over and looked inside the washing machine, and she realized that there were women's clothes in there that were not hers. You know, Pastor, the jury has, many of the jurors have said that it was your testimony along with Harry Smith that was the turning point for them. But I want to ask you on a personal level. You received a phone call from Drew Peterson after you met with Stacy, his fourth wife, saying he wanted to take you on a plane ride. What happened? Well, it was a pretty scary moment. I, after I left Stacy, after she told me this bombshell uh, of information, I went back to the church and I checked my voicemail. There, the red light was flashing and I checked it and it was Drew Peterson. And he said, he said, well, Neil, I know that you just met with, with my wife. And he said, we haven't met in a while. It'd be nice to, to meet with you so you can kind of hear what's going on in my life too. And he said, and it's, it seems like a pretty good day for a plane ride so we can meet over at the airport. And what did you do with that call as a result of that call? I, I, I immediately called him back and I tried to, as, as calmly as possible, I just told him, uh, my wife's on bed rest, we're about to have twins, and all I do now is go to work and I come home and I help my wife. And I said, I'll have to take a rain check. And, and did, you he feel said, okay. that he, did you feel that he was threatening you or trying to intimidate you? Well, it did. Um, I would definitely say that that was his goal. Uh, I have no idea what he would have done to me. Well, Pastor Shorey, uh, I think that uh, you certainly realize the importance of your testimony, and hopefully there'll be justice for Stacy Peterson as well. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you, Judge. And after the break, Drew Peterson's lead attorney, Joel Brodsky, with some exclusive information from the inside of the Peterson defense team. And later...
Kathleen Savio's voice from the grave convicted Drew. What are Stacy Peterson's chances of getting justice? I'm going to tell you what I think. We and we said thank you. He for, thanked us for, for our them. Thanks us for our service. He was yep. very happy with what we did. All right, his client convicted of murder and uh, facing 60 years in jail. The leader of the team dream who ended up with a nightmare verdict. Joe Brodsky joins me now from Chicago. How are you, Joe? Doing okay. Doing okay. Okay. What you were, um, when you spoke to Drew Peterson after the verdict, what did he say to you guys? Well, he, he wanted to tell the team that uh, he was very, um, you know, satisfied and happy with our service. He thought we did a great job. He said that he is going to be holding his head up and walking out of the, the court with his head up because he knows that he's an innocent man and that we should do the same because we did, we did very good work. All right. Now, the decision to call Harry Smith, as you know, Joel, was one that people have referred to as a colossal blunder, that Harry mm -hmm. Smith was the one person in the trial who was able to say that uh, uh, wife number four said that Drew said he actually killed wife number three. Why did you guys put him on the stand? Well, and, and this was a decision of, of, I would say, the entire team. I mean, that we debated it and there were some dissenters, but clearly, you know, the, there was a uh, consensus. But he was put on, and this is the problem with hearsay. We had a show that Stacy had a, 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 a reason to fabricate, a motive to fabricate, and people lie in divorce cases or contemplated divorce cases in order to get more money. And so we wanted to, to give that jury a, a reason of why, they, why she would fabricate. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, Harry didn't tell the same story he had told before under oath and in police reports. And, and we are going to put as part of our, uh, you know, our post-trial motion the fact that, that he did change his stories under oath. And in fact, when he said the concealment to homicide was the advice he gave, you look at the statute, failure to report a, report a homicide is not concealment. But, but Joel, so that's either not he the issue. That's not the issue, what the definition of concealing a homicide is. The issue is wife number well, four says, can I get more money in the divorce? Because he told me, if I threatened him with it, he told me that he killed Kathleen. I mean, right. I, and, when you the weigh the is, scales of justice, don't you say, right. well, I can make her look really bad, or I can have someone say he killed a third wife. What's the choice? Did, well, did Drew Peterson well, that's the choice, but agree the to this? And this is the problem. Did Drew? Oh, absolutely. And this is the, absolutely. And this is the problem. But this is the very problem we have with hearsay, because we don't have the person on the stand to cross-examine. So we cannot get into their motives. We can't ask, we can't ask them all those revealing questions that the truth, they say that cross-examination is the engine of truth. Well, we can't confront the witness. The only way we can do this is through other people's testimony about, about implied motives. And that's the very problem and the very danger of well, hearsay evidence. Well, there's no question, but if a guy's smart enough to get rid of, of, of all the victims, we're not going to let cut them loose, especially given the fact that if you kill someone so they can't testify in a divorce, and you kill wife number four so she can't testify in the trial of wife number three, you can't look at the well, judge and say, na 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 na. Can well, you? What trial, though? I mean, you know, well, but what trial? What if, if Stacy was the trial in fact killed? Of the, which the trial? Divorce. That Kathleen was of killed, so she couldn't testify no, in the no, divorce. Not Kathy. I, I, Stacey killed, so she can't testify in Kathleen. Anyway, look, but, are well, you but worried about an Kath ineffective but assistance charge. of counsel? Are you oh, worried about that? Ab absolutely not. This was uh, this was the right call to make. We've talked with a lot of lawyers uh, who understand this decision and understand that it was the right call to make at the time because uh, you know of the difficulty of, of dealing. Uh, with hearsay. You know, they say that, uh, you know, a, f a failure is a lonely orphan and, and uh, that victory uh, has a thousand fathers. Uh, you know, everybody, if we had won the case, everybody would have said, what a, what a smart decision, what a great decision. And when you lose, everybody wants to criticize and, and try to put it off. I was the leader of the team. We made this decision among the team members as a team, and we are all standing behind it as the right thing to do. 
it was All the right. only thing we had to do, and and we're going to go move forward All with right. uh, with the Look, appeal Joel, now. Joel, I, there is no one who is suggesting that you guys didn't work really hard. You had quite a team there, but you know I don't think that there's any question but that several jurors placed the uh, conviction at the feet of Harry Smith, a witness called by the defense. And, you know, but an, stay an, with an, us, Joel. And another Joel. jury might have said something else. You know, okay. another jury That's might have looked true. at it differently. That's true. Stay with us, Joel. I'm bringing in our panel, our expert panel, former LAPD oh. homicide detective, Fox News contributor Mark Furman, oh. former prosecutors and criminal defense attorneys Joey Jackson and Jeff Gold. Okay, guys, now, what you've got here is a case where they got a conviction that is almost unheard of because of the hearsay evidence. Um, Joey, I'll start with you. Sure. I mean, is this going to survive an appeal? Is, is this guy going to get off? Well, first, it it's, we'll see about that. But quickly, let me say this. Number one, congratulations, Your Honor. You opened on it, you summed <laughs> on it, and you summed on guilty, okay? Now, I think also that the prosecution here in their closing really tied it all together. And what was big in that closing was what you talked about in your opening, common sense. The bruising, right? How do you get all that bruising from one fall? That was very significant in their mind. They also summed up on what you just asked me about. That was the circumstantial evidence having to do with hearsay. The problem, however, is that everything that was ad admitted in that trial with regard to hearsay was heard by appellate courts. It was admitted. And as a result of those hearings on the appellate issues, it was all legal and proper. Okay. How do you overcome that? I don't know. Jeff, can he overcome it? Uh, no, he can't. It's not going to be reversed on appeal. Not only were the issues already addressed, but Judge Bermilla, as you know, was very, very tough on the state. So tough on the state that he took out any possibility that there's reversible error in this case. And you know what? That's the only thing I'm going to give him credit for. He was so tough on the prosecution, there's no way this case will ever Absolutely. be overturned. Absolutely. He's, he's not going to be reversed. He's going to get at least 40 years in prison, and very soon they're going to figure out a little bit more evidence and charge on Stacey. Okay. Mark Furman, you were involved in this way back in the beginning. Didn't you find Pastor Shorey? I, I did find Neil, and uh, I had the advantage of spending hours with him, so uh, I knew for a long time how great of a witness he'd be and how much he really had to corroborate. But going on this appeal issue, I am not an attorney, but uh, layman-wise, the defense cannot appeal claiming hearsay when they put on one of the witnesses that uses hearsay. Ah, you know what? That's very smart for a non-lawyer. <laughs> You're a smart guy. Joel Brodsky, what do you say to that? How can you claim that it was hearsay and it shouldn't have been admitted when you guys put the, 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 the witness on the stand? Well, but we didn't plan on that witness fabricating, fabricating on the stand. And, yeah, but and who puts a witness on the stand when you don't know what he's going to say? We did. We had his prior sworn statements. That's his problem. He said one thing under oath before, and he said another thing under oath at trial. That's under a problem oath where, for him. Judge, no, under oath, the, well, he's talking at about the hearsay the hearing hearsay and the grand hearings. jury. Judge, that right, is and the grand however, jury twice. Joel, you know this. That's what cross examination is for. In the event you put a witness right. on the stand no, and you, you can't anticipate, no, right? No, but, no, but, but, hearsay here, but, right? No, no, no. Because you can't. But it, but that doesn't give a witness an opportunity to lie at a homicide. It's an inconsistent statement that you could confront that witness. It's more than an inconsistent statement. Then it's you're saying this now, right. and as a result of that, that you cross-examine that witness and show that they're lying. Right, yeah. but that doesn't exclude perjury. You, that does not jo exclude well, lying under oath. Joel, 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 let me just ask you this, Joel. When you put him on the stand, you asked him what Stacy said to him. You elicited right. the hearsay. It's right. not and going anywhere. And we expected anywhere. him to. And we ex no, believe me. You this asked is going, him this to say this? what Stacy said. It's That's called, it. Let him, let right. him answer. And he changed his story. And he changed his story. And that may very well be what reverse. Versus from saying that he from moving from that it was extortion and an attempt to get money to this concealment of a homicide, which is absolutely ridiculous. But that's and when, almost irrelevant that may be to the very thing that over statement. He killed Kathleen. <laughs> he, you know, and he's and, and she told him that he did. But the very reason, and, and one of the one of the jurors even said that that concealment of a homicide is what sealed it for her. Or judge, him. Judge. And that is how it's going to do it. Okay. Judge, that's what you, you may overturn this whole if case. You, that alone may get reversal. If that you take, if you take Harry, if you take Harry Smith and you eliminate him completely, Neil Shorey will carry okay. this, and it would be, uh, it won't be that's reversible true. error. It will ah. carry it. So it's harmless. Error. Let me tell you something. It, let me tell you it's something. Not, it's not error. Okay. Because they waved out of the game. They waved. You know what, guys? We're in the weeds. Here's the bottom line: Is it going to be overturned because of that? No. 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 Yes. 
I'm the judge. Absolutely. <laughs> no. Very, very no. Good. All right. There's a lot of other this? error. Trust me. There's plenty okay. of error in that record. All right. Plenty Look, Joel Brodsky, I really appreciate your coming on tonight. I didn't agree with you. I didn't agree with a lot of the things you did, but I think you gave it your all. And at the end of the day, it's about Kathleen Savio, and she got her justice, and your client is going to get his. Joel, thanks for being with us. Mark, Joey, what? and Jeff. Thanks. All right. Sure. Kathleen Savio's family finally got justice. But what about Drew's missing fourth wife, Stacy? Her family is with me next.